In this video, we will show you how to install SG150CX. Step 1. Preparation before installation. Please note the installation requirements. Next is some device, accessories, and tools. Reserve enough clearance around the inverter. Use a utility knife to cut the packing tape. Remove the packing box upwards, paper angle beads, and upper cushion. Step 2. Mechanical installation. 1. Moving the inverter. Take the inverter out of the packing case. Secure the handle to the inverter. Use the handle and base handle on the inverter to move the inverter to the selected installation location. 2. Install the mounting bracket. Assemble the mounting bracket together by fixing the two sub-brackets to the two sides of the connecting plate. Put the mounting bracket assembly at the target position. Adjust its angle with the assistance of the level. Mark the hole positions for drilling. Then, drill holes at the corresponding positions using an electric drill. Insert the expansion bolts into the holes and tap the bolts using a rubber mallet to secure them in place. Hang the mounting bracket to the expansion bolts and fit the washers and nuts to fix it. 3. Mount the inverter. Hang the inverter to the mounting bracket. Ensure the inverter's mounting ears fit perfectly into the mounting bracket. Fix the inverter to the mounting bracket with screws. Step 3. Electrical connection. Keep both the AC and DC switches disconnected to avoid live line operation. 1. Crimp OT or DT terminal. Place the heat shrink or cold shrink tubing over the cable. Connect the terminal to the cable and secure it with a hydraulic pliers. Use a heat gun to tighten the heat shrink tube or cold shrink tube. 2. External protective grounding connection. Remove the screw on the grounding terminal and fasten the cable with a screwdriver. 3. AC cable connection. Loosen the two screws on the front door of the AC junction box using the Allen wrench and open the door. Secure the door restrictor rod to keep the door open during wiring. Loosen the screws on the bottom ceiling plate using the Allen wrench and take the ceiling plate out. Tear off the seal. Lead the cable through the opening on the ceiling plate. Strip the external protective layer of the AC cable inside the junction box. Crimp the OT or DT terminals onto the stripped wires. And then fix the wires to the corresponding terminals. Organize the wires and put the bottom ceiling plate back. Tighten the screws on the bottom ceiling plate. Remove the restrictor rod and put it back in its original position. Close the door and tighten the two screws on it using the Allen wrench. 4. DC Cable Connection Strip the insulation from each DC cable by 8 to 10 mm. Assemble the cable ends with the crimping pliers. Lead the cable through cable gland and insert the crimp contact into the insulator. Tighten the cable gland and the insulator. Rotate the DC switch to off position. Check the cable connection of the PV string for polarity correctness and ensure that the open circuit voltage in any case does not exceed the inverter input limit of 1100 volts. Connect the PV connectors to corresponding terminals. Seal any unused PV terminal with a terminal cap. 5. Communication Module Connection Remove waterproof cover from COM1 terminal. Install the wireless communication module to the communication interface with a silk screen of COM1 at the bottom of the inverter. 6. RS-485 Connection 
Remove the communication junction box. Lead the cable through the swivel nut, the ceiling ring, and the junction box in sequence. Strip the 20mm protective layer and the 7mm insulation layer off the cables. Connect cables to the terminal socket. Insert the terminal socket into the corresponding terminal block. Install the communication junction box and screw the swivel nut clockwise. Refer to the installation manual for mounting distance of multiple inverter installations. Step 4. Commissioning. Check the following items before starting the inverter. Open the circuit breaker. Turn the auxiliary switch on the bottom of the inverter to on. The indicator blinks blue slowly. Turn the other DC switches to on. The Ynet S operates normally when LAN is connected and the indicators are in the above state.